All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast. Good morning, East Coast. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. It is just an honor for me to be back here again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everybody who was part of the Daily Huddle last week. And I, I stopped that. I, I heard the recording sometimes. And it was just so great for me to see that this is no longer um, this that this is a community, a community huddle. And I love that. And I love ha having to be, you know, having to be with that. I love having to be part of the daily huddle as a receiver. And I was like curious, oh, what did they talk about? And I was <laughs> getting the, 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 the contribution from the speakers as, as a listener of, the daily huddle simply happening. So thank you all for for um, for doing this. And for that reason, I'm going on vacation again in two weeks because now <laughs> it's all great. So thank you all for, for participating. It really, was an honor. Thank you. Get for ready, Mark. Get ready, Andre. Get ready, Keith. Get ready, Michelle. How about you, Molly? Got it for you. <laughs> yes yes and uh anyways thank you and thank you for being who you are um Sorrel, you have a question for us yes i do you didn't know i had this in my bathroom did you what musical instrument is found in my bathroom maybe yours i don't know Sorrel. <laughs> oh come on I don't want to know so real. Oh my it's god. It's a it's a tuba toothpaste. Tuba. Tuba <laughs> toothpaste. <laughs> it's terrible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're digging deep, man. We're digging deep. Oh, oh look at the time. I gotta go. <laughs> It's terrible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. That was awesome. The worse they get, the more I love them. But this wasn't too bad, Sorrel. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Sorrel. All right. So let's get us all ready. Today we have a phenomenal conversation. You want to be part of this conversation. I promise you. This is an awesome conversation that I am very fond of. And uh, so let's get us started. Today's, today's guest speakers are none other than the amazing Sexton Sorel J. Catan and his wingman Giovanni Gonzalez. So I love today's conversation. I'm passionate about but let's get us all ready. I'm primed. Keith, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I am as I say I am and I am healthy today. I love it. Thank you, Keith. Healthy you are. Mark Bowling, good morning, sir. Where are you? I am right where I need to be. Good morning. Right here. <laughs> right here we are supposed to be. Good morning, Mark. Thank you for being here. And then, Andrea, good morning. Two questions for you. What time is it? And one thing you're grateful for. So, Gio, the time is now. And what I'm grateful for is the sunshine today. Sunshine is not a small thing. No, sunshine not is all. not a small thing. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you all for being here. It's not a small thing that you're here. It's not a small thing that you woke up. America's Leadership Coach, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Giovanni. I am the way I say I am, and I am in love. In love, in love with the relationships that are part of my life as a result of the daily huddle. That is you, Kevin, you, Andre, you, Keith, all of you, right? So raise your hand if you are or have been in a relationship. Sorry, let's start with the question. Let's start with the question. 
those questions are inside of a bigger question. Okay. And that question is <laughs> how to gain emotional fitness while growing your relationships. Now, if you are or have been in a relationship, that question is perfect for you. So let's start over again. If you are or have been in a relationship, raise your hand. Sorry. And raise your hand if you want to start a relationship. Now, raise your hand if you want to stop a relationship. <laughs> that one takes a little bravery, right? <laughs> and raise your hand if you have relationships in your life that you say are important to you. And finally, raise your hand if you have an important relationship that may not be working as well as you'd like it to. So this, this question and this conversation, as Gio mentioned earlier, uh, he created a conversation. It's a one-day conversation entitled Transformation in the Struggle of Relationships. And together, we'll be leading that conversation for the first time on April 24th. And uh, today, we're delighted to be introducing the conversation to you and playing with the content, playing with the concepts and engaging you in creating something phenomenal for yourself today. So Giovanni created a couple of assertions to anchor the conversation. So Gio, I'm gonna kick it back to you. Go ahead with the assertions and what we call the aspect of what it is to be in a relationship as a human being. Thank you, Sorrel. Thank you very much, Sorrel. So um, Sorrel is just very humble. This is a conversation we created together. So I was, I was, I've been creating this, con this conversation for maybe about three or four years, but every time that I'm going to deliver it as an introduction or some sort, I always call Sorrel and he always make changes and Anyway, so I just wanted to say that Sorrel is being very, very generous to say that I created this conversation. Now, what Sorrel was pointing to is um, there is a place where all relationships live at some point or another, and that is chaos. Now, I want you to, you know, see for yourself, see in your life that, you know, kind of allow yourself to see your life, the movie of your life, and you'll see that in your life, your relationships from time to time has been chaotic, but like really chaotic, haven't they? <laughs> like if you really look, right? Like some of them have been really chaotic. And, you know, it, it, for, it's easy to see it in others, right? It's really easy to see it in others. Maybe in ourselves, depending on where we're in right now, we have varied that, you know, that aspect of that relationship where there was some chaos. And so right now we're in a healthy, emotional place, maybe. So I'm unwilling to look. But if you look, you don't escape this inalienable truth. Relationships are chaotic. If you look in the world, it's very easy to see, right? There is disagreements in expectations all the time. There is, you know, all the time an aspect of being in our relationship is to have expectations that I never share them with others. Let me give you one. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get kind of kind of like uh, naughty on you, right? Most people's expectations of our relationship is to have it be monogamous. You know, just one partner. That's an expectation. Most people have it. And it is an expectation that is often not talked about. It's just there. And so relationships deal with infidelity a lot. Then there's the world of money. There are expectations around the world of money, right? 
Yes, very chaotic that world of expectations. Then there is, it gets even it gets darker, right? There is the world of pornography, the biggest secret of the world that nobody does, but everybody does, and it creates it creates real chaos in people's relationships. How to raise children, and you know, you go on and on and on. Relationships are chaotic in nature; it's just what they are. However, there is a way. There is a way to be with the opportunity of this chaos that you can go from chaos to love. You can take all that chaos that being in a relationship is, that relationships are, and you can create love. You can even in, in those relationships that it may seem that the best thing to do is to look away, but there is a way to complete our relationship so that you can have love again. And we're not just talking about your significant other, we're talking about your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your past friends, with the people at work. There is a way to restore it to workability or there's a way to restore it to love so what we're going to be introducing is one distinction and so i'm going to give it back to you one distinction that we talk about in the course and we talk about many but one that allows you to start opening up a new direction from chaos to love right so sorrel is going to go a little bit deep on that Anything else you want to add before you go into the next distinction, Sorrel? Uh, yeah, Gio, it'll flow right in, right? As we're talking about chaos, it just came to mind that there are times in our relationships. Now, take a look for yourself, right? There are times in your relationships where you say, hey, it's all cool. Everything's hunky-dory. And really what's happening in those moments is... I am either ignoring the chaos or avoiding it. Like it's really chaotic, but you know what? If I don't do anything about it, if I sweep it under the rug, then it's peaceful. So there's a difference between chaos that's there. I'm oblivious to it. I've swept it under the rug or chaos that's there and I'm actively using it to create love in the relationship. So what Gio is pointing to is that to create love from the chaos, there's this one thing that we need to acknowledge as human beings. As human beings, we have a major blind spot when it comes to relationships. And it's not that you're bad because you have that blind spot or that it's hopeless because you do, and we all do. So here's the blind spot. In every relationship, I am that the relationship works when the best, the me, is being taken care of. So in other words, in the background as a human being, I'm always looking for what's best for me in any relationship. Now, here's the deal. Everybody else is. <laughs> so it goes like this. Jill, you love me when you're looking out for what's best for me in our relationship. And on Gio's side, Gio goes the same way. Well, Sorrel, you love me when you're looking out for the best, what's, what's best for me in our relationship. And so you've got these two poles looking and expecting for the other to take care of what's best for the other in the relationship. So when Gio doesn't take care of what's best for me, I'm disappointed, I feel slighted, and I am resentful. And vice versa. In relationships for human beings, well, you know, I've lived a few years. I'm discovering that we call that love. What we call love is when 
I'm taking care of what's best for you and you're taking care of what's best for me. It's an expectation. It's a quid pro quo relationship. If you do that and you do that until death does a spark, then we're in love. The relationship is working. So Gio, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to add something right where you're at, Sorella. And, and um, I wanted to make, uh, I wanted to add something as you were sharing, which is that something I meant to say at the beginning, relationships don't live where most people define what love is. Relationships don't live in this concept of that that a lot of us that a lot of us borrowed from movies like unconditional love or reach for the stars or love on the first sight or that's not where relationships live maybe it's a place to get to maybe it's a place to connect every now and then but that's not where they live they live being impacted by that constraining one's identity that Sorel is pointing to. And I'm going to speak in first person, but try to speak, try to see it for yourself. I am in my life, in my relationships, that I got to be listening for what is best for me. And so I do that with my significant other. No, I don't mean to do this. I'm a good person. I want to give her love. But without distinguishing it, I'm listening for what's best for me. With my children, I'm a good father, don't you know? I've reinvented my whole life around, but I'm listening for what's best for me. And many times I can even point to it. I just know it's happening. I'm listening for that. Anyway, I wanted to add that, Toriel, go ahead. That, that, that's perfect, Giovanni. And you said that relationships and the definition of relationships and love doesn't live where we normally look. And this is where it lives, folks. Uh, we're discovering that to have relationships that work, to have relationships that leave you fulfilled, is to be in life practicing. So before we open it up for questions, we're going to offer you these two practices. The first practice is this. Uh, know that you're a human being. <laughs> and as a human being, guess what? You are listening for what's best for me in this relationship. Acknowledge that and in your life, practice seeing that constraint in action. Like literally, just look at your relationship with your significant other and see where you are in the relationship for what's best for you. Look at your relationship with your employees or your employer and see for yourself. Really look that you are there listening for what's best for me. That's the first practice. And the second practice, Giovanni, give it to them. Thank you, Sorrel. Yes. And as you're listening for that, notice the chaos that it creates. Just notice it. Don't do anything with it. Just notice it. Self-awareness, you know, is the key to wisdom, right? Notice the chaos that it creates. And the second one is go in your life, you know, go in your life with the people in your life and practice listening for what's best for them. Go in your life, you know, the people in your life, and in, if I am in your life, listen for what's best for me, right? But anyway, I'm, I'm not really in your life. So go in your life <laughs> and listening, listen for what's best for them and give it to them. Give it. Give what they want. Give them what they're looking for. Give them what they want. And as you're doing it, 
notice the constraints of your identity about it. Like, oh, I feel, I, I, maybe you may feel I'm being used right now. Or maybe you may feel um, I've been, I'm, I'm being taken advantage of, or, or, or my, the favorite one, the agenda. Are you going to do this for me too? Are you going to be listening for what's best for me? No, <laughs> notice when it's happening, right? That's the second practice. So two practices, so I'll give them to, me, give them to them one more time. Both First practices, practice, we open it. You are a human being. You are always listening for what's best for me. Notice that. See it in action in your relationships. And the second practice is go in your relationships and work in the face of the constraint and listen for what's best for them and give it to them. Give it to them and see what happens. So that's not the entire conversation, but that's the conversation for today. What's percolating where you're sitting? What are you thinking? What questions do you have? Yeah, buts, you name it, throw it at us. That, lots of lots to think about, right? It's like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> I know it's kind of a deep question, but that's how, you know, that's how we roll. That's how we roll. What, are, what is there for you? What are you thinking? What's opening there for you? What's, what are you present? Something? Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. Go ahead, Michael. So I, I would say that uh, that is actually a practice that I've been sort of working towards. I found that for years, I thought that I was a good listener and I really wasn't. And by going with these practices, it probably not probably it will help me to one be a better listener because i what i've come to understand is when i'm talking or when i'm when i when i say that i'm listening or when when i should be listening i'm actually waiting for an opportunity to give my insights my input uh to show how smart i am etc cetera, etc cetera. but by standing back standing down i can listen more intently and I can grow from those relationships and from the knowledge that I get out of that. So this is a great set of practices. So thank you, I appreciate it. And I will work harder at it. Thank you, Michael, thank you. Ronald, <clears throat> you're on mute, Ronald. Hey guys, this is so apropos. Um, I mean, actually, I'm. I, as you can tell, I, I am. I am at the beach, for real. It's not a background. It's not a fake <laughs> background. But, but you guys just gave me the tool of a conversation that's gonna happen in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. So my relationship with my brother is almost is always been. Uh, yeah, I mean, we actually we're celebrating our birthday weekend, so he's in town too. So we're about to have breakfast. And um, and really asking him, I mean, finding out what I need to, how, what's important for him, for me to continue to love him. Uh, it's a great way to start our conversation this morning. So I'm I'm definitely really happy that uh, that I listened to to this uh, uh, daily huddle this morning. So it kind of really set me set set everything up and I'm I'm really bound for some great uh good relationship now. I mean one of the things is me being in Florida right now by myself without my wife it was a conversation where would would not have happened a couple of years ago. I made great progress, you know, like okay, you go on there by yourself. Yes, I am going by myself and everything's gonna be fine. We had friends over and everything, and and uh, she was really happy about it, and and I am and I am uh, happy. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be a whole lot better man when I get back. So, <laughs> so this is uh, this is a great conversation this morning, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ronald. Thank you for taking the practices on. Yeah, Rose. 
Good morning, everyone. Okay, so here's a yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but, yes, I love those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I get that. Rose, any chance that we can see you or not possible? No, it's not possible. <laughs> read between the lines <laughs> yes. remember that oh rose you look particularly beautiful comment the other morning <laughs> or, or, or not <laughs> um, okay all right so there's what's best for me Step up from that is what's best for you. How about just what's best? Can we get there? That is a profound question. Like it points to the flip side of the constraint, right? So when I'm in a world where it's what's best for me, it's all about me. Then when I'm in the world where it's all what's best for you, then it's all about you. Whether I'm in that world or you're in that world, it's still the same world. That's what I'm hearing you say. So what if it was just what's best? So now the big question is, well, what is what's best? Frankly, Rose, at this moment right now, I actually don't have the foggiest idea about what that world looks like. I've been so trained, so raised to be in a world where it's either about me or about the other. And when it's about the other, I say that's me being generous. When it's about the other, I say it's me being kind or being loving. And what you're pointing to is, wow, what if being loving, being kind and being generous was not about anyone's identity at all. Thank you for that, Rose. Just being Yo, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I love Rose. This is why I love everything about you. I love the, the, the where the inquiry is pointing to. You know, what's best? You know, what's that greater good? What's best? And I, and I think ultimately that's the place to look. I say that for most of us, and I'm including myself, not, not you, Rose, but myself, <laughs> my hidden view, my blind spot, my unrecognized constraint of my identity of constantly listening for what's best for me doesn't allow for the space of your question. But what's best? Maybe, I say, maybe in the practice of listening for what's best for you, Rose, I may have an opening to discover what's best. Not, what's just, what's, not just what's best for you, but what's best? I may have an opening. That's what's there for me, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ronald, Kevin Flanagan. It's great to see you here. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Uh, Mark Bowling sent me a little message saying, hey, guess what? Kevin's been the guy in my life for a long, long time. And I'd love for you and Giovanni to meet him. So we're looking forward to meeting you, sir. Welcome. So, so Earl, there is, yes. So Earl, there is a question from Sheila in the chat. Oh, what did Sheila say? On Facebook. Hello, Sheila. So um, Sheila was pointing to what would have life fulfilled? I wonder what context was she coming from? What would have life fulfilled? Well, given that we're speaking on these two practices, right? I'll take a leap of faith and say that you and I can live fulfilled lives when we're at work. Saying, I am human, 
and I am that what's best for me is what I'm listening for. And then there in that moment, when I say that, when I acknowledge that, there's the opportunity for me to consider what's best for another and to give that to them. And as Rose and Giovanni added, in the moment of deliberately practicing giving to another what's best for them, there's the opportunity for both of us to discover what's best, period. And in that practice, the fulfilling life gets to be discovered. Like there is not a fulfilling life out there for us to chase, but there's this fulfilling life for us to create by practicing. So, Gio, I invite you and everyone else to practice that way. Sheila, thank you for the question. And uh, let's send ourselves home, Gio. Yes, thank you, Sorel. So here, here's the here's a way to send us home. Those of you who are listening and those of you who are listening to the recording later, thank you for listening and going all the way until the end. We appreciate your attention, right? Really. Now, we really want to invite you to consider registering now to, the, to this conversation. It's a one-day conversation to give you, to equip you to restoring relationships that you may have been resigned for a while, and also to give you tools to create relationships, to design relationships the way that you intend to, rather than being, in some degree, a victim of your identity, right? Responding and reacting all the time, right? And that's just what human beings do. So I left you the link on the chat for you to register. And we have this very cool juicy special for the Daily Huddle family. And if you're listening, right? Which is that for two people is $97. For you and your children, your mother, your father, your significant other. For two people is $97 for the whole day of training. And if, just, if it's just one, it's $67. If it's just you, $67 for a one day training, world-class training, transformational. So go to the link, register, bring somebody. This is the gift that you wanna to give to someone. All right, Sorel, that's what I wanted to say about that. Well, Gio, I have a question for you. What are those seven or nine or 10 things that we ought to do and practice every day? To be yes. sexy, look like you, speak like you, be sexy like Vince, have great skin, and never die. Thank you, Sorrel. And I'm gonna say the seven in the context of allow. Allow yourself to love, to love those that you love to dislike, to, that you love to hate. Allow yourself to eat more sensibly, eat more plant-based. Allow yourself to stress less. Just be with life, stress less. Allow yourself to sleep sleep at least seven hours. Allow yourself to, Sorrel, help me out. Allow yourself to give. In the context of giving, take today's practice. Even if you know what's best for another. Well, my dog's giving like crazy. <laughs> Allow yourself to give, Gio. And then last but not least, move like crazy. Thank you, Sorrel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Have a phenomenal rest of the day. We look forward to see you tomorrow. Great to see you, Pascal. Hey, guys. Sir, thank great you. to see you, too. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you for thank bringing you. out Daily Auto. All right. Great session. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, <laughs> Rose. Bye-bye, everybody.